Charlie, a play by Michelle Chan. Millie is currently living in an institution where the nurse takes care of her. She is the mother of Charlie, but the baby Charlie she refers to is not the reality, as she is stuck in the past. In reality, Charlie is her adult son who lives a successful life and visits her often. Voice one is passive-aggressive, impatient, and stubborn. Voice two is caring and protective. Voice three is the logical one. These voices are occurring inside Lily's mind. They are not the reality, but represent the confusion inside Lily's head. Nurse is a calm character. Scene one. Lily is rocking a baby in her arms. The baby is made up of only blankets folded together into a bundle. Hush, little Charlie, don't say a word. Mama's gonna buy you a mockingbird. And if that mockingbird won't sing, Mama's gonna buy you a diamond ring. She continues to rock the baby in her arms. All right, little Charlie, it's time for your nap now. Shh, go to sleep. You have a nice nap, and when you're all rested, we can play again. You are just the most adorable little baby there ever was. Aren't you? Aren't you? You're perfect. My perfect little Charlie. She begins to hum the tune of the lullaby and dances slowly around the space while still rocking the baby in her arms. She stops dancing and sits cross-legged center stage. She's giggling and making funny faces at the baby to make him smile or laugh. Oh, I do wish I could stay, but I know I mustn't. You need your sleep. Good night, little Charlie. Hush, little Charlie, don't say a word. Mama's gonna buy you a mockingbird. And if that mockingbird won't sing, Mama's gonna buy you a diamond ring. The baby starts to cry. The crying noise is unsynchronized and produced by the chorus. <laughs> Lights fade to blackout as Lily is walking off stage. Scene two. Lily is sitting in a chair off to the side. Three dark figures appear standing behind the baby and start to argue. The conversation of the voices is taking place inside Lily's head. On stage, these voices only appear as shadows or silhouettes. Lily is attentively listening to their conversation by following their movement with her eyes and having non-verbal reactions to their dialogue. What should I do with him now? He has a name. Sorry. What should I do with Charlie now? Well, not to leave him with strangers, of course. He's been through enough. Oh, sure. Just let the nurses take him, shall I? That is unacceptable. I'll just grab him and go. Yes, I'll be a good parent. No, I won't. I can't even care for myself. Why else do you think I'm still stuck in this nut house? Then, what do I do? Just give me a second to think. It's not that big a deal for the nurses to care for him, right? Of course, no big deal at all. I'll just let him grow up with those awful nurses. Let him have a pleasant childhood with no mother, no father, no education. Why, I'll even let him join the circus if he wants to. This is no time for your humor. How can I love him from so far away? How can I get to see him grow up? How can he get to know his mother? How about just leaving him here? You have got to be kidding me. Voice two attempts to pick up the baby. No, don't. The voices become the nurses. Are you all right, dear? They want to take away the baby. 
What baby? My baby. Lily, there is no baby here. Yes, there is. I can hear him crying. Well, why don't you just relax, dear? No, they're going to take baby Charlie away. The nurses become the chorus again and begin to make the unsynchronized crying noises. Lily tries to get out of the chair, but she can't lift herself up. Let me go! Let me go! Give me Charlie! Blackout. Scene three. Lily comes running onto the stage. She is looking around, frantically and worried. She realizes that the audience is observing her, so she directs her dialogue at them. Don't look at me like that. Like... Like I'm a bad mother, a bad person. You think that was easy for me, letting them take my baby? Well, it wasn't. Lily turns back to the audience, hesitant and slow. She is trying to defend her own actions to the audience. When explaining this story, she is slightly neurotic and overexcited. Charlie's going to have a great life. You'll see. He'll be a model student, never skipping class, have perfect attendance. He'll be a rule follower, or maybe even a rule enforcer. He'll be a prefect. He'll be the president of every club and the most popular boy at school. Those horrible nurses don't know how great he is yet. But I do. I am responsible. I can definitely take care of Charlie. But the nurses don't think so. Now nobody will let me see my own baby. I deserve more. My baby deserves more. And that's why I'll just go along with all these treatments. So they will give me back my baby. Sometimes I think the nurses are just jealous of my beautiful baby boy. Yes. Yes, that's it. That's why they won't let me have him. They're all sad old hags who can't have beautiful babies of their own, so they take away mine. But, but if that's true, then, then I must take him back. Oh, I must save him and my baby. She starts to fumble around center stage, looking for a way out, but she is confined. She starts banging the imaginary walls. Hello? Let me out, you old hags. I won't let you steal my baby. Lily pauses and listens. She suddenly throws herself to the ground and starts to bang the floor. Charlie, are you all right? Mommy's coming, Charlie. Don't worry. I'm coming to the rescue. She starts to bang on the imaginary walls again and starts stomping her feet. Let me out. Let me out. Let me out. Don't take away my Charlie. Give him back to me. Give him back. Charlie, don't worry. Mommy's coming. Please don't take away my baby. Please. She slowly crouches to the floor and begins crying. Please. Please give me back Charlie. Please. I can take care of him. I promise I can. Please, please, please. Scene four. Lily is curled up in a ball on a bed at center stage. The nurse enters. Nurse one is carrying a blanket. She throws it down at the foot of Lily's bed. Wake up, Lily. It's time to get up. She continues walking around the stage and attends to the room by opening the curtains, tying up equipment, rearranging flowers, etc. Lily sits up and notices the blanket. She quickly snatches it and cradles it like a baby. Oh, thank you. You've given me Charlie back. Sorry, dear. My baby. Charlie. All those awful nurses have given him back. Lily, this is not Charlie. Of course it is. 
It's my baby, baby Charlie. Oh, thank you for giving him back to me. I will take good care of him, I promise. No, Lily, dear, this is not Charlie. The nurse tries to take the blanket out of Lily's hands. Lily pulls away quickly. What are you doing? You can't take him away again. Lily, listen, that's not Charlie. It is. Lily looks down attentively. What do you see? I, I see a blanket. It's dark gray and woolly. Yes, and that's all? No. I also see a chubby little pink face with soft brown hair. He has a little button nose and beautiful hazel eyes. And they're looking right at me. They're gleaming. He's blinking. No, it's just the blanket. Focus on the blanket. The dark gray and woolly blanket is all that there is. Uh, no, stop trying to trick me. Charlie is right here in my arms. I can hear him. I can smell him. I can touch him. She continuously strokes the top of the blanket bundle. The nurse walks closely towards Lily and quickly pulls the blanket from her arms. She lifts the blanket up to show Lily that there is nothing enclosed within the blanket. Lily gasps in shock. She begins fumbling around the room, looking for the baby. No! What did you do? Where is Charlie? Where is my baby? Lily, dear, there is no baby. Yes, there is. It is my baby. It's Charlie. Lily, there is no baby. Charlie is not a baby. Lily is still searching the room. Yes, he is. He was right here. What did you do with him? Where did he go? Lily, calm down. Please, sit down. Lily takes the nurse by the shoulders and starts shaking her. Where is Charlie? Give him back! The nurse grabs hold of Lily's shoulders as well, trying to restrain her. Lily! Lily, calm down! Listen to me. Lily is still in distress. I'm here to help you. Everything is all right. Lily is calmer. You just need to trust me. Do you trust me? Lily nods. Okay, good. So trust me when I say that Charlie is all right. You are all right. And everything is all right. Lily nods. Just have a rest now, okay? Lie back down. The nurse helps Lily back into her bed, where she was at the start of the scene. The nurse picks up the blanket and begins to cover Lily with it, but hesitates. In the end, she decides to take the blanket with her upon her exit and leaves Lily alone on stage. Scene 5. Lily is sleeping on the bed. She begins to toss and turn as if she's having a nightmare. Angry music begins playing as Lily's movement becomes more aggressive. Lily sits up and begins frantically rummaging through the sheets on the bed. Charlie, is that you? Where is he? Where is he? Throughout this physical scene, Lily experiences a variety of emotions, from anger and frustration, to confusion and worry, and even happiness and joy. There are both abstract and naturalist elements. Lily is angry with the nurses for taking away baby Charlie, and at herself for letting them. She is confused why Charlie is not with her, and worried about where he may be and how he is doing. The scene is meant to shock the audience and even confuse them a bit. It shows Lily deep in her emotions. The audience can now tell she obviously suffers from deep mental illness. Scene six. Charlie's at work and typing away at his desk. He starts to pack away his things and gets ready to leave the office. Charlie takes out his phone and answers a call. Hello. Hey, honey. Yes, just leaving now. No, don't think I'll be able to make it tonight. Yeah. No, I, I don't think I promised. 
sorry. I'm going to be spending some time with my mother. Y yeah, I know I just went yesterday, but I hate the idea of her being all alone in there. Well, the nurses aren't always very good company. I'm sorry. I know, yes. Yes, yes, I know. Just have dinner without me then? Okay, save it for me, and I'll microwave it when I get back. Okay. Love you too. Bye. Charlie picks up his things and leaves. Scene seven. Lily is sitting up in her bed, daydreaming. Lily, you have a visitor. Charlie enters from the side, closest to the chair. Hello, Lily. Charlie takes the chair and places it to the side of Lily's bed. Hello, Lily. Do you remember me? Lily looks up at Charlie, noticing him for the first time. Oh, yes. Of course I remember you. How are you? I'm well, thank you. And you? I'm fine, thank you. Lily returns her focus elsewhere, as if she's still daydreaming. She's not looking at Charlie anymore. That's good. Well, it seems you have a very lovely place here. Uh, and look, you have flowers as well. That's nice. So, do you have any activities planned for today? I'm not sure. The nurses planned them for me. Then I'm sure you have a fun day ahead of you. The nurse I met outside seemed very nice. I'm sorry, but who are you again? I'm me, Charlie. Lee returns her focus elsewhere, as if she's still daydreaming. Oh, yes. Charlie. I have a baby named Charlie. Really? Yes, yes I do. Have you met him yet? I'm afraid not. Well, the nurses took him away. They wouldn't allow me to take care of him. I'm sorry to hear that. Even though I'm fully capable, don't you think? Oh, yes I do think you're fully capable of taking care of your own baby. Tell that to the nurses. Well, maybe you'll just have to wait until you're ready to live on your own again. It's not logical to have baby Charlie return to you when you've got a whole team of nurses around, is it? I suppose you're right. Why don't you just focus on having a good time? Here. For now. But Charlie must be so scared of all those nurses. And now his mom. I think Charlie's going to be okay. Oh, and I'm sure the nurses wouldn't be taking good care of him. Sometimes I think the nurses are just jealous of not having a baby as amazing as Charlie. That's why they took him away from me. No, I don't think that's true. I'm sure the nurses really do want the best care for Charlie. Then they should let me be with him. I'm his mother. You never know. He could be closer than you think. Don't worry. I can guarantee you that Charlie would turn out fine. OK? OK. Scene 8. Lily is sitting center stage. The voices have returned, and there are still only shadows. Lily is not daydreaming this time, but active in the conversation. She follows the sounds of the voices with her head. Oh, wow. Charlie is so grown up now. What are you talking about? Wasn't that my Charlie? Of course not. Charlie's a baby, and that was not a baby. Stop trying to confuse me. That wasn't Charlie. That, then where is Charlie? The nurses took him away, I think. Oh, right. I hope my Charlie can become just like that. He is so handsome, isn't he? Was he? Didn't notice. But don't you worry. Not only will he be handsome, he'll be smart too. Of course! Yale University is where he'll study. Law? Or maybe business? How about a doctor? A career in medicine? Yes, that's what my Charlie will be. A physician. A surgeon. Smart, handsome, and a life-saving hero. 
Scene 9. Charlie is alone on stage. Charlie Thompson, 25 years old, a surgical intern, married to a beautiful lady. No siblings. Father, don't know. Mother, don't get me wrong. She does have some good days. She will always be my mother, and I do love her dearly. But in all honesty, most of her days are bad days. She almost never remembers me. But it's all right. I mean, of course, I wish she could recognize her own son. But what can I do, right? Why dwell on things that cannot be changed? Am I right? She first began getting sick when I was finishing the last year at uni. At first, she just couldn't remember why she went to the kitchen or what she needed at the store. And I thought it was normal, with people getting older and everything. But now it's deteriorated to the point where she is stuck 25 years in the past. She thinks she has a baby. But really, she has a baby. I used to keep telling her over and over, Mom, I'm right here. I'm Charlie. In the beginning, she could snap herself out of it. But it got to the point where she didn't believe me anymore. And that's how she ended up here, with the nurses. She's safe and taken care of, and that's all that matters. Of course, it hurts that she isn't able to recognize her own son. But that's not her fault. Each day is a new challenge with my mother. But I just want her to know that I'll always be here for her. Black Cat. Thank you.